as I told you before, anyway, it is uh, going from top to bottom, partial differential equation to ordinary differential equation. There were uh, many directions to follow. To follow. And, uh, but uh, often people, it depends on the sub discipline where they start from, they start from uh, in the middle of these, uh, of these patches of models. Uh, so what is doing physical models then at different scale? Uh, the, doing different, uh, uh, for me, doing physical model at different scales, preserving mass, preserving <laughs> energy, that we know is not, is not going to fail in any case. And obviously, be close to, to what we measure, whatever <laughs> measuring means. And uh, in general, it also uh, means to me that uh, we have to use mathematics. Sometimes in the claim that uh, uh, the tower model are not working properly, the, the nature is complex. The idea is that uh, we are not able to describe mathematic, uh, nature with mathematics. I believe exactly the contrary. Maybe the mathematics we are not using, we are using is not good enough. When Galileo was writing that, uh, that stuff, mathematics was essentially Euclidean geometry. Now we discover that, uh, uh, they, we dis say that we discovered that algebra is, uh, was there before, but we formalized algebra, we, in, in the, the, the uh, short notation was, okay, was already present from Tartaglia before, but we, uh, we made huge advancement in, the, in mathematics on the, and the tools. We get uh, the differential calculus, the partial differential equation, the ordinary differential equation. We have new statistical tools. So we have to use, a, in case, different mathematics. There was a paper that has this title, which is quite, well, was quite, quite challenging, where say the, 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 original, the, the, the original title was how to make our model physically based. Then, uh, they, after a revision of, of the paper, it was finally published as Catchment as Meta-Organism, a new blueprint from hydrological model. What they were saying, these two authors, uh, they say that, that when we approach the, the modeling of the environment, the environment is so complex, that, but this complexity, uh, complexity cannot be disentangled. Uh, meaning that one plus one <coughs> doesn't make two. It depends on how one and one, or, or at least when we have one and one, the operation we are thinking to do is one plus one equal to two. But probably there are other operations we can do with this number, which can be one times one, which is one, or one, uh, in this case, one divided by one is also one, but yeah, I choose it. But they say two. We have different type of operation we can do with one, uh, one and one. We can put one and one and do 11 sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> We discovered, we, we have different types of, of things that are going on. And we have to agree on the type of algebra we are building, for instance. And uh, so uh, we have uh, separated, uh, these are one and one are the separate, uh, separate things we are going to models. And when we have instead groups of models, we cannot group of processes interacting, we sometimes we don't, we, uh, we, we are forgetting the interaction. So for instance, I was telling before, we have surface water, puddle zone, groundwater. Use this should identify three discipline, disciplines 
in, in hydrology, surface water hydrology, but also on hydrology and groundwater hydrology. This was just because we were not able to treat uh, uh, with, in a correct way the interfaces between <coughs> these three uh, environments. Now we can do that, both mathematically and numerically. And uh, so, but in, in, in the hydrological cycle, we have mu such mu much more complexity because you have life in the, in the hydrological cycle. The hydrological cycle, we have plants of vegetation, not taking into account that I am transpiring too in this moment. So, when we have life, life uh, evolve adapting to the conditions. So, there is a self adaptation of uh, part of the hydrological cycle which is produced by transpiration to the condition, to the climate conditions. At large scale, we cannot also claim that this is not influences the climate itself. Because if you look at our atmosphere out, out there, which and now today is a nice day, the sun is not yet above the mountains. It's a nice day and uh, uh, we have a lot of oxygen over there. The oxygen on the earth is due to plants work, otherwise we will have CO2, di carbon dioxide. So uh, part of, let's say, uh, the hydrological cycle is entangled with this thing. <coughs> In some places, uh, about transpiration, transpiration is at least, uh, is, can be 60% of the budget. For, uh, in, in our zone here, which is a pretty humid zone, we have on the uh, yearly budget is 30% of the budget for transpiration, more or less, or even more, and strongly varying. So, but this is produced by plants with, which are adapting <coughs> according to some principle of optimality, which was selected by the evolution, the survival of the fittest let's say, the connection between ecological niche and interaction between different species of plants and animals sometimes. <coughs> so hydrological cycles in the middle of all this complexity, which also involves the, the soil. We were used to, uh, to say that soil is uh, full of living material, but only in these years we are studying this living material in the soil, how and to understand how it inter interacts, for instance, with infiltration. How roots uh, drive infiltration, how plants drive infiltration. I saw experiment when where people, for instance, uh, put uh, grass on their experiment, on their experimental surface, and the rate of infiltration was uh, getting doubled. Twice, infiltration was twice on the on the on the terrain with grass then the terrain without grass the same terrain so there are things that still uh, are interacting and we are not going to uh, and we were not addressed so far in hydrology or properly addressed so we, if we don't go to uh, describe this interaction we do a poor job it says what he say the model the, the, the author of the model no, the, of the paper he is here say capacity of the ecosystem to manipulate the system in response to temporal dynamics and it, it must be encapsulated in, in our model <coughs> how can do we how can we do then you go you can go and read all this except from the paper this actually reminds uh, in a, a, a in a hypothesis. I don't know if we uh, if we now the sun and the sun rise, rises and uh, uh, the Gaia hypothesis. The Gaia hypothesis was a, a hypothesis done most of 40 years ago. 79 was kind of an important uh, <coughs> um, year. For this guy. The Gaia hypothesis was uh, more or less that uh, all living on the earth is uh, works like a super organism. 
and these superorganisms is conceived and worked for maintaining life. So if the concept is a little bit metaphysics, if the, uh, it kind of started to, uh, to, to promote a, a, a lot of research, uh, researchers between the entangling world, biophysics, atmosphere, hydrology, etc. <coughs> So, if you will want to know some more about the Gaia hypothesis, and uh, uh, here <coughs> is also a paper by Jim Kirchner. <coughs> Jim Kir James Kirchner is a, one, a hydrologist, one very good hydrologist in need of uh, ETH, uh, the working at ETH. And uh, uh, um, the hi history uh, tells that he presented on uh, one of these, I don't know which year it was, but I think in the 80s, it presented uh, themselves at this Gaia meeting and was a uh, uh, piece by piece <laughs> kind of uh, debating the, the Gaia hypothesis. And during the year, he maintained, a, maintained a, a, that presentation and increased his observation about the Gaia hypothesis. So you can find he, he, them, them here. Uh, in any case, if the Gaia hypothesis in such can be thought to be too much invasive of, of the idea of a, um, having an exceedingly high metaphysics, meaning that one of the principles that, wa that was uh, implied was that there is homeostasis in, uh, for the whole Earth. Everything is balancing again to build uh, things to the <coughs> equilibrium where life can, can, can be sustained. We know now that this is actually <laughs> not exactly the case and we are worried about, for instance, for the climate change because actually we can shift out from this balance. And so life on the earth can, can disappear, unfortunately, if this is the case. And uh, because the homeostasis is not, homeostasis means there is a sort of a correlation in, in feedbacks to maintain a certain range of temperature, a certain range of uh, quantity of oxygen in the atmosphere, and so to maintain life. Yeah. Or at least now, <laughs> one thing that we are, we are also conscious about is that life is not as necessarily human life. <laughs> it can be bacteria life or other life. So. But we can shift uh, then to, uh, the health can shift to different type of equilibrium in, in any case. Uh, there is another book with a fond of, maybe I already mentioned to you. This is uh, about river networks and how the structure of river networks <coughs> for, <coughs> the, for the hydrological response and why the, uh, the the surface of water is shaped, uh, the, sur uh, the surface of the earth is shaped like it is. And this book promotes the idea that uh, there are a global principle of uh, energy minimiza minimization of entropy control. And I think it is uh, still one of the books that is right. Uh, the work, the work is, uh, 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 sustain this idea that uh, morphology of rivers self-organize to <coughs> dissipate less energy. This is an incredible, uh, um, an incredible idea because uh, uh, while uh, living living systems, we can accept the idea that living systems are going to organize themselves through evolution. To the uh, uh, to evolution in com competition implied by evolution, they are self-organized to get the fittest living, the fittest organism. Uh, this book, in a sense, is also claiming that also the morphology is going to be optimized. That's it for the biggest turbe. That's me with the bear. <laughs> So, you young hipster. 
you were 40 years and 30 years late. Uh, also in the 90s, there was the idea that, yeah, another, another concept is uh, uh, the fascinating idea that uh, uh, the type of geometry that we, we can measure, talking about the mathematics that, that, that describes our, our science, uh, if it is geometry, in this case geometry or even, that geometry is the fractal geometry. Meaning that uh, is a, a river is a kind of cell similar. If you look at the small river and the large river, they are pretty similar. If you can uh, just expand the topological laws that they obey are uh, the same. So there was this Perbach that was promoting the idea of self-organized criticality, meaning that some systems are in a critical state because critical state are in physics are those who present self-similarity across the scales. And these self-similar things were uh, described through the appearing of power laws in some type of the processes. All the scale are in contemporary present to the things. And this was a great metaphor that was used to, uh, to do science in the last, uh, say from in, especially in the late 90s until uh, until 2000. And this was uh, going, this, uh, so interactions happen through scales, like in turbulence, also in nature. And so we have many scales interacting. And we have not just, let's say, peer to peer interaction. I'm not just interacting with you, but nature is interacting. I am interacting with ants and with God, in a sense. Different dimensions. And this give much more extension to the way we have to think in, uh, in which we have to think our models. More recently is a, uh, this book, which is the thermodynamic of the Earth, meaning that uh, if we have to a cross scale, uh, one way was self-similarity, the other way is to to try to think if uh, going from small to big, we can use some sort of thermodynamics. Or the thermodynamics itself describe the, the big processes at the level of, the, of, of our system. All this matter is matter of discussion, actually. Is uh, the living thing that, the living thing that uh, we are discussing in these days. All these topics sometimes were ab abandoned, abandoned a little bit, but they are still alive. Maybe now we, have, we are a little bit tired we, we, because we didn't get all the answers that we wanted to have. One claim here is the Maslow, Maslow's law. And that's one way we, that justify the way why we did and built GeoFrame. The Maslow law is, says that if you have a, a hammer, you tend to see any problem like a, a nail. Because, uh, you know, all this mathematics is difficult to get. It's suffer, uh, you have to suffer to do something new. <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, if you have a tool for doing things, you try to use that tool every time. If you have a, a one reservoir model, linear reservoir model, you, with the linear reservoir you can you try to describe whatever flux you. So you have you, you need a more articulate mathematics what? and a new articulate um, a new articulate um, numerics to implement various tools, different tools, competing tools, comparing the tools. But the problem is in the model or in the data, in today, nowadays? Because the problem is always in the, the data, the because the, the, the models are right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 because mathematics, I think, it, it just, uh, people, there are, today there are, uh, there are uh, extra people that uh, can manage a lot of uh, um, <coughs> problems in, in mathematics. 
that. What do you mean? I mean uh, that uh, if, if you have a model then with the particular stochastic, uh, uh, particular stochastic equation uh, and, and not a simple, uh, and not a single reasonable model, probably you you can find people that uh, can solve that those equation. Yes, I mean but, uh, but the, the data, yeah. which uh, but uh, the, the t today, okay, we have uh, we can have a lot of data, but we are not sure about the quality of of, of the, those data. Yeah, so the, the most of uh, 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 when twenty uh, twenty years ago, people uh, talked uh, <coughs> talked uh, of a model, and and the people try to create a. a Complex model. Now the problem is here. Is, is data, I think. Uh, now, in two weeks, I have to do a, a lecture which is entitled uh, Hydrology and Modeling in the Rich Data Era. So I have to think about this. Uh, yes, uh, but data is part of modeling. You cannot think that model, uh, data is not modeling. Yeah, the data is gi given directly by God by revelation. Data comes through a deep, uh, <coughs> lot of da data are modeling themselves. But uh, what and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 if you claim that the idea that there is the idea nowadays that some models, just the data, can give you the idea, can just having the data, analyzing thousands of data, you get revelation about nature. That's not the way that uh, uh, the, the last four centuries of uh, science worked. No. That's, uh, uh, even Francis <coughs> Bacon says that uh, you can, you, yeah, yeah Fra Francis Bacon more or less was trying to support this idea, but the, the scientific progress made is built on hypothesis. And uh, the failure of this hypothesis, the, the claim that uh, true big data or true or through uh, and just processing the data with some algorithms that we don't know how it works and that we obtain knowledge and all the things. Uh, it's right that it challenges us, but I think it's not going to produce, uh, not, not going to produce uh, a real, a real knowledge at the end. I know. Still, is a, an open question, I guess. If you uh, if you will give a, a tool da, like that, you now we have many that recognize our voice. For instance, that tools are built on data analysis, big statistics. But uh, first, the practitioner are thinking, for instance, that there is no statistics at all in data in data in data working. Instead, is that they don't see the statistics, but the statistics is there. And uh, maybe we don't see the algorithm. The algorithm is self-forming, but there is an algorithm. There are ways to understand all these types of things. But the argument is, is marked by the product. Yes. So uh, the first step, the then no, <laughs> data in, in any case, there are a lot of questions. Sometimes even some of my colleagues from, uh, from remote sensing, they think that uh, you have just to take remote sensing. We, you close the budget by remote sensing. But then, uh, actually, they hide under the under the under the carpet that there is there must be hydrological modeling. So the problem is not data itself; it's the use that you how do you produce the data, how the data are available, and then obviously we can go. So but, uh, but, uh, but I have my my answer. But no, no but uh, when you, your child uh, was at the primary school, probably he he he. He was able to to uh, create a, dis a, di a discussion without uh, knowing the the rules of the grammar. <coughs> I don't know. I I I, I, well, no, uh, I am a, a poor hydrologist. I sound the trumpets. No, I don't. Know. No, there was uh, no, Miles Davis. A, it's a, uh, it's Ma a, Ma Miles Davis was saying, "Don't ask me." To me, much complicated quest, uh, questions. I am a playing the trumpet, so I am an hydrologist. To for what I got the problem that I am managing, I have some ideas. Maybe there are some problem that uh, works differently. 
how the uh, how our brain is uh, is functioning i don't know i'm not an expert i can and i can give uh, you a, a less a less educated probably the, 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 your brain but know, the, knows yeah. the, the, okay. the, the exact solution of navier stokes equation yeah so the <laughs> because, of, because there is a blood system yeah, which uh, okay don't go don't go away don't uh, enlarge too much the discussion you are going out here uh, anyway uh, one thing is that in the last century the last decades we have a great optimism that through this type of synthesis uh, we were looking for scientific type of uh, argument of uh, arguing uh, through which we uh, we could organize our knowledge and bring some principles to uh, guiding principles to uh, across the scales of thinking and uh, to give answers and uh, that ought to be not to be so is still present maybe or maybe i am old but, but, but i don't see it as much i see uh, people, for instance, in ideology, much more interested, as Manuel said before, uh, managing with data without understanding what the data exactly means or they do, but uh, this can be a thing. And uh, my two questions are, where are the experiments? Where, are, where is the mathematics? Meaning that uh, whatever we want to study, we have to uh, describe which are the experiments and the reality is the we want to describe a Galileo was saying that we can prepare the right experiments meaning isolate our system we cannot isolate our system because our system is the whole earth or it's a catchment which is kind of isolated we can treat it as a control volume but it's still full of interactions so we have to think what are what are, what are our experiments we have to think better which are this uh, meaningful experiment and I claim that we cannot do meaningful experiment if we don't have model to drive the experiments even if they have these models are algorithmic models like a uh, um, neural network or things like that and obviously what is the mathematics to describe it how can we define spatial patterns one of the challenges is to describe spatial patterns, but we are pretty simplified to describe spatial patterns. And if we, if we don't have a measure of spatial patterns, then the river was quite evident because the pattern is river are those that I talk about in the first days where we talk about the Horton and Strahler laws, for instance. But if you are not able to describe the pattern in nature, even the pattern in the sign, in in some things we are not going to be able to to build the mathematics and not going to be able to give the right answers so we have to discover a mathematics to the mathematics to describe patterns and for instance neural network can be a mathematic to get something of the, about the patterns uh, uh, our power law power law was used to to a, a uh, to imply a meaningful self-organization, meaning we have a scale, number of scales interacting between them. Otherwise, the, some, uh, the under, under hypothesis was that uh, uh, if we don't have power law, everything is decaying exponentially. We have not, not, not correlation <coughs> between the, the processes. Uh, Another big tool in mathematics is information theory. This is a, a, from a paper by Radha Rudele Kumar, which is, I think, is pretty interesting. We, they have a new papers in this, uh, this year, I guess. And about the interaction in the ecological system and how a long, uh, a long time also interaction are changing between subjects, so a direction to explore. Uh, one question is how we can explore the mathematics of interactions. Uh, 
the way we organize the, the models through co components, two balls in a few lectures ago, was a, a trial to organize the interaction among with graphs. The, the also, these ones are graphs. Oh, sorry. These are, these are our gra graphs of interactions. So my executive claim is that if we have to look at, to, to look at, at, the, uh, at the new science of the new era, is to look at the interactions, interaction between different compartments, and have a mathematics that describe interactions. <coughs> So uh, a stratification of uh, knowledge is due to some law emerging, not just by simple integration, but accounting for the interaction. So when we account for interaction, not only all, also the connection between the compartments, the space, how the spatial connections are done, exactly right in river networks but in a more complicated manner in three-dimensional media, in a more complicated ma manner also in the conceptual space where we have system interacting. We have, we have the carbon cycle interacting with the water cycle, and the water cycle interacting with the energy cycle, or the segment cycle. So, looks at the interaction. 